you've got attorney's cost, you've got loss of property, you've got back rent, you've got penalties and damages from your, your, your mortgage company because they're going to be charging you stuff. And you've got a hit to your credit and a loss of a relationship and you don't think you have punishment. Well, yeah, but I mean, this isn't my first rodeo by far, but, but of course. Okay. So if I, if but, one of my normal sellers had one of those seven things I just listed, they'd be like, take mm -hmm. the house off my hands. If you come up with a reasonable offer. What if I give you cash in your pocket, you'll let me take over your mortgage? It depends on what kind of cash you're going to give me. Okay. Where, where, where can I tell the team is an absolute no? What if they told you seven grand? I wouldn't take that. That's an absolute no. Okay. Tell me your bottom number and I won't, we won't waste your time. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. You tell me what you can do. Cause I, I, I have to pray about it. I pray about everything. I, I really have to pray about it because like I said, I was, I was, you know, pretty adamant, but, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to bend, but not break. I got it. No problem. Um, you know, the the, the big challenge with us is this. Okay. So imagine all these other landlords that are currently not having tenants pay because everybody's taking advantage of their landlords, right? Because all your, mm -hmm. all the tenants think the landlords are these rich people that, you know, they're, right. you know, the tenants are all entitled. So what's happening is millions of landlords are not getting paid right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is happening to us and our company? All these landlords are coming to us and saying, take this home off our hands and just catch up my mortgage right but you know what had he been on the the uh lease uh the the uh people they they had a um oh what's that group set up in the courtroom they had three different rooms where they were cutting people checks on the spot but they said it was a conflict of interest for him so he they would have cut me a check for all the back rent and uh enough for 12 months if he had been on the lease love it so right there we, in, in we, court, run into, we run into all these opportunities to usually it's about two to three landlords a day call us off our website and they're saying hey you guys say you'll catch up payments and take over the existing tenants right we go through all this stuff and i'm i'm not exaggerating i have been talking to three tenant or t three landlords a day for the last probably four or five I months. I believe you because and you you're know, the, but hold on, you're the number one, every week. you're the number one landlord that is dealing with the most problems and you still <laughs> think it's fun. No, I don't think it's fun, but I, you know, like I said, if I wasn't in a position to catch it up, if I just have to, then, then it would be a different story. But that, that's just like when, when you go and buy a car, if you're not walking, you're, you're less apt to just settle for something that you don't want than if you just really needed a car as opposed to just wanting a car. It's kind of that scenario. I like that analogy. Pardon me? I like that analogy a lot. Here's, a, here's, <laughs> here's one of my analogies. You ever heard time okay. is money? Oh, Yeah. So yeah. how much, how valuable and is time your time? uses itself up whether we use it or not. Right. So here's your time eating up. Even your time with me on the phone is all because these knuckleheads aren't paying you and you're willing to just keep going through it because you're trying to hold on to a couple extra thousand bucks. No, no. I just want a reasonable offer. That's, that's, that's what I'm, I'm just, I just want a reasonable offer. That, that's all. I don't, I don't it, think you want an offer. I think you want $25,000 down. And then if you don't get it, then you just, you're going to go through the hellfire to, to prove yourself right. Well, no, that's not it either. You sure got me wrong, but I mean, I'm, I'm not going to take 8,000. That's the bottom line. I what mean, should I, what I, should I tell the team? Well, you see what they can come up with. They're, they're going to be just like you. Everybody it seems like everybody, I'm like the, you're one side of the Oreo, they're, they're the other side of the Oreo, and I'm just the cream in between. You guys are squishing me. Well, I apologize for that because I certainly don't try to be difficult. No, you're, you're actually super sweet. I just need to know where you need to be so I can write it down my notes so I can get them to move forward as well. Well, I need to be somewhere close to the 25,000, <laughs> as close as you all can come. Okay, and if they say no, when should we follow up to see if you've changed your mind? 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? Um, that's on you.
Because the reality is if we have to catch up the arrears, right? Every single mm -hmm. day is just getting more and more expensive. Well, that's true. Why did you become a minister? Why didn't you become a car salesman? You're a great, you're a great negotiator. <laughs> I sold everything but cootie. <laughs> so I have been a salesperson too. <laughs> Well, I, here's the thing is you, I, I think you had me sold for a little bit that you're, you're not in that this is not a big deal, but I think it's a bigger deal than it makes out to be. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell the team that that's a big deal. But like, like I, I said, I, I can't just get hit over the head for this house. I've owned this house over the 30 years. So I, I mean, and, and I put $10,000 down on it. So right, and I you mean, cash flow, you crack cash flowed for 30 years, like you said. So you've made a lot of money on the property. Now you got yeah, a major that's headache. That's true, too. But, I mean, I had, I did a, I've done a lot of repair work to the property, too, because you know for yourself, when you're not living in a property, people, when people don't, yeah, they don't own care. things, they don't yeah. take care of it like they would if they owned it. Right. So, but, I mean, I've made good money on it, but, like, like I told you, I try to – not be a slum landlord because the properties I have are nice properties and I try not to be a slum landlord and keep things nice. Yeah. But it just didn't work out, you know, renting to a family member. So. All right. I'm going to tell the team you're not, you're, this is not a good deal for you. It doesn't seem like we can help you and we'll just leave you guys alone. Well, that's on you. But like I said, if you, Shoot me a reasonable offer. I'm willing to listen. Can I tell you, can I be honest with you about the, giving you an offer? Certainly. Certainly. Hear me out on this, okay? Okay. I imagine with you being in foreclosure, you are being called a thousand times. Oh, no. Now they make in, an appointment. Oh, okay. They call me like once a month. But you're getting called, right? Are you? Uh-huh. Yeah, they make an appointment and they do call me about once a month. Great. So here's what happens when we make offers, okay? I'm going to tell you a little phrase that we use in our business all the time, okay? It's actually on my wall. It's a, a plaque on my wall, and it says, buyers are liars. Have you ever heard that before? Buyers are liars? Yes, definitely. Here's what it says right underneath that. It says, sellers are worse. And what we've learned is that sellers lie to us all the time. And what do I mean by that? This, Okay. We give somebody an offer and they're the nicest person to us. And they tell us, Hey, this is the deal. And then what they do is they take that offer and they run over to some idiot and that, that other idiot bids us out by a hundred dollars and we lose everything. So our company policy, because buyers are liars, sellers are worse is that we don't give offers because we don't want to be bidding against ourselves yeah. and giving our competition a heads up. Now I mean, you, I can understand right, because you're a master I, negotiator, I, right? So you I, understand that. I get that. calls about this out. I get postcards. I probably get 20 a week from different people. But Jennifer is the only person that I have spoken with. It was someone from uh, home buyers or something with a, a lady named Jennifer. And I thought it was the same Jennifer. And I said, is this Jennifer in uh, California? And she said, no, I'm actually here in Oklahoma City where you are. And I said, oh, well, I didn't even talk with her because, like I said, I was only talking with Jennifer. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the truth. You know, I tell you what God loves, and that's the truth. Yeah. Well, um, I, I just really wasn't thinking about selling it. And she just called me out of the blue, and we started talking about it. Then I, after, because I didn't even know I was going to be going through this with this boy. And then after I started going through that, I said, well, you know, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. Because then if I don't have that, it's nothing to gripe about. And, and I, I mean, I have other houses, and, and I can be done with him and done with that. And then it's nothing to gripe about. Right. Totally get it. Um, so okay. Like I said, if you all can come up with a reasonable offer, I'm, I'm, I'm open to it. So you're a broker, right? So you get real estate pretty well. I did when I did it. I don't, like, I don't do anything anymore and I don't start that till after 10 o'clock. But you understand, you understand the business, right? To some extent, the laws change. That's why you have to take continuing education. Okay, great. So you understand the basics. So if I buy yes, the property, I if I buy the property for one, what was the price you wanted? 150? Mm -hmm. What did I actually buy the property for? Because I got to pay closing costs, right? I actually bought it for what? 152.5? Okay, then 148. <laughs> okay. If I, well, 
So I bought the property for one fifty two five. One forty seven five. If we want to get technical, then we'll go one forty seven five. Right. So let's say I let's say I go buy it for one forty seven five. I pay twenty five hundred dollars in closing costs. I now own it for one fifty. Right. Now what am I going to do with that property? I'm going to turn around and I'm going to spend probably four or five months waiting to get these knuckleheads out of the property. Right. So I'm going to hemorrhage more money, more utilities, more this, more taxes, well, more insurance. Then I'm going to sell it on the property. Utilities now, so he might move out real quick on his right. Own. So then I'm going to get them out of the property after attorneys and evictions and all that stuff. And I'm going to clean up the property. Once I clean up the property, I sell it for 165. How much money did I make? Well, that's why I said you make me an offer that sounds reasonable to you. And then maybe we can meet somewhere. Man. I know you said you don't make offers, but I mean, I'm open to that, but I'm not going to take $8,000. I will tell you that much. Like I said, I paid $10,000 down on the house and then brought another 50 some hundred dollars to the closing table. 30 years ago. And that, and that wasn't much, you know, to pay down on the house. Cause I paid $250,000 down on the house in Edmond and brought $59,000 to the closing table. So, okay. Let me write, let me write down some me. notes. So if we, if we worked out a reasonable amount of money of cash in your pocket, would you be willing to let us take over the payments? Let me just write that down. Yes. Okay. You would. What is, now, what's, see, that's not difficult at all. What's the payment you on easy it? I am? You are easy. What, what is the payment on that right now? Like under 800 bucks? It's under 800. I, let me see if I can. Okay. This, okay. Here's one. The payment was 700 as of October, 2020, your new monthly payment for October, 2020 will be 761.73. I knew it was under $800. Okay. 70, 761. Love it. And 73. 73. And what does it say? And it answer? used to be $1,800. I probably could find an old statement and show you where the payment was $1,800. What's so your uh, really what's your interest there. rate? That's a thousand dollars less than it was. What's your interest rate on it? Three point something. Okay. I think it's three point six two five. Let me see if I can see that somewhere. It's on something here. Uh, what if we don't buy this house? What if we buy another house that you don't like as much as you like this house? Three point six two five. Uh, I've got good renters and the rest of them. Do you like those ones as much as you like this one? Um, not really, because I don't like that part of town. I like this part of town. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Okay. But, sounds good. And then I have some properties in Tulsa. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to, I'm going to talk to Jennifer and the team and just let them know about our conversation and we'll see what we can do to come up with an offer. I honestly, I look at the 165 is, is you're right. I think that's retail. And mm -hmm. I think if we buy the property for one forty-seven five, pay for closing costs, do all of our work, we're going to lose fifteen or twenty grand. Mm -hmm. So I think that that that's how far the number is going to be off, just for us to break even. Well, like I said, you let me know what you can do, and I'll let you know if I can do it. I already think the answer is no. You're, I, I think that's your middle <laughs> well, name. Well, I'm not taking eight thousand dollars. If, if if you if you come a lot better than that, I, I might consider it. But what if like what said, if I told the team ten thousand dollars? I wouldn't take ten. Okay. Like I said, I I basically I brought uh, I spent fifteen thousand dollars down on it. Okay, so what if I told the team fifteen thousand? I already know they're gonna say no. <laughs> I'm about to say no. You don't have to worry about them. That would be a bit of pill to swallow. Okay. I'd have to pray about that one real hard. <laughs> can we can we pray together on it? Because man, I I think yeah, gonna, we can pray together on it. I'm always the freaking cream that gets squished. Everybody's well, always. You know, but that's how I feel about me because I'm this nice girl, and people take that for a weakness. They take my kindness for a weakness, but that's the God in me. I've raised 13 children that were not mine, all nationalities. I'm biracial. My mom is is white, and my dad was Barbadian. They're both deceased. And I'm five foot one. I weigh 117 pounds. I don't have a wrinkle on my face. I just turned 65. My, my man is 42 years old. His mother thinks I'm younger than him because I look very young. I have a nice figure. I dance. I sing. I do did comedy. You, did, I'm you just say, did you just say you have a nice figure? 
Yeah, I have a nice figure. Look me up on Facebook. All those are recent pictures. I'm going to like now. That, now that you said that, now you said that, I have you. I, you can't say that and not have somebody look you up. Yeah, look me up. Look me up on Facebook. I post. I post every day. Poetry, pictures, everything. Let's go. Let's look me. I look real young. You said you're Barbadian. Uh, no, I'm. I'm uh, biracial. My mom is Caucasian. Got it. And my dad was Barbadian. You're the best. I think you're the best seller I've spoken to in four months. Well, you know, I just try to do people right. Yeah. And, I, and that's, that's all. And I just look for people to, to do the same. You know, this guy, this guy's mother was dying out in a parking lot. This is a white guy. Not that it matters, but, you know, because people look at me and they see black, but I have a white person's disease, and that's why I tried to work with it forever. You know, the disease I have is called many years. It doesn't occur in black females. But anyway, um, I, I just like lupus. I've dealt with it over the years. It's incurable, but I've dealt with it, but, and, and I'm okay with it. I see it as a blessing in disguise sometimes because it's allowed me to I travel all over the world. I can do what I want to do. It's just a kind of a boring life not working anymore. But, but I've written a book, too. You, you and Jennifer need to purchase it and read it. It's on ebook. I will. I will make sure that we buy that book. What is it called? It's a comedy. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's, it's funny. It's, it's comedy. And I'm right. Uh, the sequel is ready, but I don't want to uh, publish it until next year because I don't want to run them too close together. I just had a Hollywood... Uh, producer i just signed a contract with a hollywood producer so i don't know what's going to happen with it but anyway the script is for hollywood what do you what's your next step what's your next thing because you sound like a visionary you got all sorts of cool projects <laughs> it's you know i i don't know I, i'm spontaneous that's got to be your like i said name. before before the pandemic i was performing three nights a week i did comedy on Tuesday, I did poetry on Wednesday, and I sang on Thursday. And see, I, I can dance. I dance like Beyonce. I can twerk. I can do all this stuff. You I can, you can twerk? Boy, <laughs> I think I invented it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> my kids, I embarrass my kids because my, my daughter's friends, they always try to, uh, they say, Do you mind if I tell my, do you mind if I tell my partners you want to twerk out a deal with us? Yeah, I'll twerk at it. Any of them single, I need a husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. And I'm a lot of fun, too. I bet. And I can cook. I have a catering business. You have a catering business, too? Yeah, just for you catering. You see a lot of my food I posted on, on Facebook, too. What, el what other businesses do you have? I'm trying to write them all down. <laughs> I have a furniture and carpet business. So, I mean, I'm not destitute, that's what I said, but I, I would like to get rid of this just for personal reasons because I feel like if I'm tied, tied to that, because I had no idea of, of, of thoughts of selling it at all. Why don't, you, why don't you be my private lender on some of our other projects? Sounds like you're rolling in the dough. I'm not rolling in the dough. I'm the brokest person I know. Dang. Uh, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the brokest person I know. <laughs> but, you, but you can twerk, and that's all that matters. Yeah, that's how I saw. See, you know, sometimes a girl got to use what she got to get what she needs. <laughs> that's right, hundred <laughs> percent. All right, well, you're you're the sweetest person I've talked to in a long time. Do you mind? I'm going to write these notes down. I'll get with Jennifer and we'll get back in touch with you. You are amazing. Well, thank you, and so are you, and so is Jennifer. But like I said, look me up, and when you talk to me again, you're going to say, "You sure do look you up." <laughs> I know. I just told. I just uh, texted Jennifer and told her to look you up. I want to see this nice figure. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I got a nice figure. As you'll see, if you scroll down, you'll see my daughter and I in our Christmas pajamas. So you can, and it's a whole a full body. You'll see my birthday party. I'm in a red dress, and you'll see a full body. In fact, I'm sitting on a horse on my profile picture. I just took that picture what's last your, what's year. Your, um, what's your Facebook name? Very um, simple. I love it. <laughs> Love it. You're the best. I'm going to, I'll call Jennifer now. You're, you're awesome. Let's talk in a couple of days. Okay. Okay. My pleasure. Have a great night. You have a blessed night as well. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Wow. 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 How was that call? Give me, get, rate me a zero out of 10, 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10. What do you guys think?
All right, so Jennifer, um, my wife, where's my wife, Jennifer? Where'd she go? She probably had to go to sleep. That call was so long. Where'd you go? Oh, she had to leave. She's not on here. Oh, there she is. There she is. Oh my gosh, you're a saint. <laughs> So what do we learn from that? Um, she's kind of a lost cause when it comes to this. I think she's just going to have to bleed out and I'll just keep checking in with her, but there's opportunity. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to give you good advice. Cause I, the reason I stayed on the phone with her, I want to yeah. kind of plant the seed with everybody. Um, will you start your video one more time? I accidentally stopped oh. it. It says it's on. Oh, okay, sweet. Hold on. Um, oh, now it's just me. Weird. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure everybody can see you and me. So hold on just a second. Oh. Um, okay, so a couple of things. Yeah, I have spoken to a lot of crazy sellers just like her. So um, everybody that is like, oh my gosh, you know, anybody that's never spoken to a seller, guys, did you? What did you guys learn from that? Right? You have to keep throwing out analogies. Stay on the phone with her. Where did Where did we finally get her? Fifteen. 15. So I think, I think that the number actually with her is probably 12, five. Yeah. Okay. So I think the number is 12, five and you see, there's a couple of things that I said to her where I actually told her buyers are liars, sellers are worse, right? Yeah. I will actually tell a seller that. And I will tell them, this is why we don't give offers is because we've been burned so many times. And that's what I'm afraid of is I got to go back to my partners and tell them you want an offer, but blah, blah, blah. blah. Anyway, so here's the advice I would give everybody in this situation. Jennifer, there's a deal here for sure. I don't think she's a lost cause. Okay. I for just think, I think that she's incredibly um, hyperactive and that's perfectly fine. You just need to, you know, adapt to her wave, which I think you've done a really good job on. Here's the advice I have. Go find a buyer that will do this deal at a 12,500 in her pocket price and make the deal work. Yeah. Because if your buyers are saying, um, you know, tw 20 grand is a little bit too high, then if you can get them down to 12,500 and you can make a deal work and you can make your money on the back end of the deal, that's how you make the deal work. So you go, hey, I'll do a zero assignment fee and I want 20% of your net on the back end of the flip. That's how I would structure that deal. Okay. That's interesting. 20% net on the back end. Yeah, because, okay. because you would just, the challenge is, You're, you're, you are the cream between an Oreo. Okay. And here's why, because you've got two people that are both acting super hard and they're trying to squish you as much as possible, right? They're both going to act hard. Your buyer, your seller, everybody's going to act hard, which is why I use the Oreo analogy mm -hmm. and they're just squishing you. Right? Yeah. So essentially your buyer is going to say, well, it's tight, it's tight, it's tight. And you go, okay, well, what if I don't take an assignment fee up front? Then that way I'm not making any money, but I take a portion of your back end profit. Let me tell you something that's really interesting. I have a, uh, a buyer just recently, like five months ago, Jacob Chapman is his name. I assign a deal to him. And in the process, I, he is like, well, this is a really skinny deal. I go, bro, how about this? We lower my down pay, we lower my um, assignment fee from 25 grand to like 15 grand and you just pay me 20 percent of your profit on the back end and then that way you have less of a burden up front he's like oh no no, no i'll just pay your 20 uh 22 5 22 5. okay and he yeah. goes up to 22 5. i see him two days ago at jamil's mastermind and i find out he netted in his pocket how much money do you think he netted in his pocket on this fix and flip you won't guess it's crazy a hundred and seventy seven thousand dollars so wow. why, why did, he, why was he so yeah. hard on this side? Guys, pay attention to this. Your buyer and your seller are both going to act like the hard side of the cookie and they're both going to try and squish you because that's their job. Okay. So when you go to a buyer and you say, Hey, let me take part of my assignment fee and put it on the back end. It's going to make them as there. It's going to soften them up real quick. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I would do with my buyers. Jennifer is I would reach out to three or four buyers, see if I can find somebody who would take this deal and then start following up. Don't follow up with this lady until you find somebody that's willing to do a deal at 12.5. Okay. 
Yeah, I have uh, have a few people from the home investors from your home investors um, list. Have you so, gotten any value from this mentorship? My buyers list? Absolutely. It was a uh, it was a blessing. I was just I texted everybody and emailed them all. Love it. So, Good job. So yeah. I would I would go to those buyers see if you could find somebody to be willing to do the deal. And if it's a tight deal on the upfront, figure out something that you get cut in on the back end and you get this deal done. Now, I stayed on the phone because that's what you do, right? Yeah. I have a fun time with it. I'm so comfortable on the phone that I can do a lot of the things that I just did. And it doesn't bother me. I know what's going on. I know exactly where that conversation was going. I was waiting until I brought up, oh, well, they're going to tell me no. And I, I got to write this down on a piece of paper. I was setting myself up for something 30 minutes before I said it. I knew what I was going to say. This is a good lead. Yeah. It's not a bad lead. What most people will do is they don't see, so do you guys see how I kept harnessing her pain and I kept harnessing her pain. I kept harnessing her pain until I finally am like, I started telling her third party stories where I said, man, all these other sellers I'm talking to are just like, take my property. And you just don't seem like you give a crap. Like you just are a glutton for punishment. Yeah, and I just kept great. pulling it out, pulling it out, pulling it out, pulling it out. And finally I just said, doesn't sound like you even want to sell. Doesn't sound like, and she, I made it so she had to correct me. Mm -hmm. So she started correcting me and she's like, well, for the right number, for the right number. So if you guys go back and rewatch that, it's kind of like watching, um, I just watched this movie, Tenet. Has anybody seen the movie Tenet? My husband loved it. <laughs> yeah, but you have to you have to go back and watch it a second time. And yeah. it's actually not that great of a movie the second time because now you know what the heck is going to happen. Uh. So it's like watching my seller calls. When you finally see how I got to where I wanted to be, you go back and you go, I see what he's doing now. I see what he's doing now. I see what he's doing now. So go back and watch it. And that's the best way to learn some of these things. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hey, everybody tell Jennifer, thank you for, for forcing me to do this. Good job, <laughs> Jennifer. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you.